Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a Carissa Holly. This is Carissa Holly, a very low maintenance, almost industrial, low growing, evergreen shrub that has very lustrous, dark green foliage. Carissa Hollies can reach three to four feet in height and three to four feet in width. Pretty easy to control this plant below three feet tall and wide for a very, very long period of time. Carissa Hollies work best in zone seven to nine. I'm in zone seven here in central North Carolina and these rarely ever take any damage and I think they'd certainly be worth a try in the lower parts of zone six and zone, in zone six B as a foundation plant. I think maybe you would get a little burn on the top of it during some extreme winters, but I think it would be really no problem. It'd just flush right back out of it in the spring. Carissa hollies grow moderately slow. We might get three to four inches of growth out of these in the ground. We could probably get a little more in the nursery than that, but in the ground, they're moderately slow growing, which makes them an absolutely perfect low growing foundation plant because you're just not gonna have to prune it very often. Carissa hollies would prefer more sun than shade, but they will grow in quite a bit of shade. I think you'd wanna offer them at least two hours of direct sun all the way up to full sun. This plant can absolutely sit in the middle of a parking lot probably and not be hurt by the direct sun. Carissa holly can be used pretty much anywhere you need a low growing evergreen shrub. If you have lower windows, this is an absolutely perfect foundation plant or maybe a low porch, or maybe you have some depth on your foundation and you could put some taller things in the back. This would be a perfect plant to put in the front. Also would work well in mass plantings with some other type of flowering shrub and this just stay lower. It'll make the dark green foliage will make your flowers behind it stand out quite a bit more. But really this plant could just be used kind of anywhere you need something industrial that you just don't have to worry about. There's no significant flower on Carissa hollies. The larger, some of the larger growing hollies that are similar to this of the Chinese hollies like Dwarf Burford or Needlepoint will flower, but this one's not really grown for a flower or a berry. It's grown for this low mounding habit. One thing that is interesting on Carissa hollies, and I'm not really gonna be able to show it on a video, is the top of the leaf is a very dark, rich, shiny green color. And actually the edge of the leaf is kind of a yellow tint to it. And it actually has kind of, so it creates kind of a two-tone effect. In terms of planting Carissa hollies or any sort of broadleaf holly like this, uh, maybe Dwarf Burford or Needlepoint, these are very, very industrial. You probably need to do very little to prep the soil for these, really. I always mix in some pine bark soil conditioner if I have clay soils just to create some drainage. And if I had sandier soils, I would use some compost or some cow manure, 50-50 with the sand, just to hold some water in place. But really, I don't have many concerns with this plant other than you, the normal things like elevating it. We'll dig the hole, the depth of the root ball, and then take some of that, mi that soil mix, that clay and bark or that sand and cow manure mix and put it back in the bottom of the hole, maybe two inches deep, so that when you pull this plant out of the container and you set it in the ground, it's sticking up about two inches. Then pull your, the rest of your soil mix up to the edge of that, tamp it down well, and then lightly mulch this plant. Don't bury it in mulch. People bury things way too deep in mulch typically, and you'll end up creating some overwatering issues. One issue you may run into with almost any container grown holly is that they can be root bound in the container. When you pull them out, you may see the roots are really, really tangled on one another. When you pull it out of the pot, if it's like that, you're gonna to wanna to pull at the root some to try to get them going outward instead of continuing to wrap in a circle. That's gonna be very important. If it's very, very bad, if it's just a dense mat of roots, which it, which it could really could be with this plant, you can take a knife and cut in about a half inch top to bottom in maybe three spots. And that will get those roots starting to go outward instead of continuing to wrap around one another. It's very important on any shrub that you do that. If those, roots, if those roots continue to wrap in a circle around one another, eventually as those roots mature and get larger, they're gonna start to strangle one another. As far as watering goes for Carissa hollies or any broadleaf holly, once this plant's established, it's gonna be the most drought tolerant plant you have in your yard probably. The first six months or so, you're gonna wanna check on it occasionally. I planted about 25 of these 
recently and uh, just kind of forgot about them. I mean, this is a very drought tolerant plant, but I just didn't think about them at all. And about half the leaves fell off of them. It was no big deal. We started watering them again. They've leafed back out, no problem. But I did damage them by, by taking it too far, taking it to the extreme. Yeah, the plant's drought tolerant, but it needs about six or eight months to become established before you start to forget about it. So early on, water it, but when it becomes dry, you know, drown it and then leave it alone for a while. I use this technique I call drown and forget. Saturate the entire area around the plant really, really well, and then let it dry out between waterings. In terms of fertilizing Carissa hollies, or any hollies for that matter, these are acid loving plants. Azalea camellia rhododendron fertilizers are great because they're specifically made for acid loving plants. Also holly tone is another, obviously it's called holly tone and this is a holly, uh, it's a perfect fertilizer for it. It's an, a good organic option. Both of those things should be slow release. I do it maybe mid spring and you'd be good to go for the year. This plant has some nice new red foliage on it and encouraging that new growth throughout the season keeps that color contrast between that red and green. This is middle of October now, so it's kind of slowed down on the growth, but there is a spot here where that new growth is coming out, kind of a burgundy red color. Carissa hollies could be pruned anytime they need to be. Uh, this plant, like I say, will get three to four feet high. If you need to keep it two and a half feet, that's not a problem. I kind of, I don't like plants pr pruned in little perfect, perfect balls. This plant grows in an almost perfect ball, but I like a little bit of that spikiness on it. So when I prune something that I'm trying to keep two and a half feet tall, instead of pruning it down to two and a half feet, I like to prune them down to two feet and then let it grow back out for a season or a season and a half. So it has more of a little bit more of a natural look to it. So practice that on most things you prune. Don't prune them to the exact size you want to keep them. Prune them a little lower and then you can allow them to take a more natural shape and not be you know, little pom-pom balls everywhere. I probably wouldn't prune these in the late fall because this outer foliage would probably offer some winter protection to this plant. Also, it's not gonna grow back, so it's gonna look like whatever you cut it down to in October for the entire winter. So probably mid-spring or you know, up to maybe the first of August, you could really prune this plant pretty hard. After that, I'd probably leave it alone if you need to prune it until the following spring. In terms of insect or disease problems on Carissa hollies, you're really just not going to have to worry about anything like that. We might get a little leaf spot issue on them here at the nursery where we're overhead irrigating them a lot and the leaves are staying wet quite a bit in the ground. You're just probably rarely ever going to see anything like that unless you had them in too shady of a condition and the leaves stayed wet a lot of the day. You might see a little leaf spot issue, but even then I just wouldn't worry about it. We will see some scale insects in the bottom of this plant where there's this, the, the dense growth habit of this plant prevents any air movement through it. So it kind of gives an opportunity for scale to latch on in the interior of the plant. It's really not that big of a deal, not something I would worry about spraying for and not really gonna cause you any problems. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the low growing, evergreen, low maintenance Carissa Holly. Thank you for watching, and if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also, comment below with any questions you might have about any kind of low-growing evergreen shrubs. Thanks again.